Case Morby. If you haven't heard of him, you will today. Phenomenal real estate investor. One of my favorite shows ever. I got five pages of notes. I'm not kidding. I took notes the whole time. I got five pages of uh, little handwriting notes. So, so if you're listening, folks, you can make some dough. Can anybody get into this? Who's motivated? One thousand percent. Why aren't more people flocking into this? This is the formula right here. It's Fine. called subject to. Bro, you're making me sick right now. Why would the bank let me do that? But this guy seemed to come out of nowhere and he's got an unbelievable following tribe. He's got a top podcast. He's got the most popular TV show on A&E called Triple Digit Flip. But what's even more impressive is his heart to serve. Pace Marby is the guy for all things real estate and he does it all with something called creative financing. going to be everything and anything you could ever want to know about creative financing. When I watch Pace, you know what I see? I see a guy who got a whole universe of shoe lips who told him, you can't do it that way. And he said, F it, watch me. Welcome, welcome to Get Creative, my friends. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We go live every Monday night at 7 p.m. If you guys are listening to this on the podcast, come and hang out with us live on YouTube. You can always go to youtube.com forward slash Pace Morby. We are about to hit 300,000 subscribers. So thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. Really means the world to us. I remember there was a goal in my life where I said, I hope one day that I can get to 100,000 subscribers. That would be a lifetime goal. And we are about to triple that all within a couple of years. Super grateful to be here, super grateful to have an opportunity to serve you and give you my experience, my understanding around the world of real estate, the world of finance, the world of business. I am not just a real estate investor. I also buy not only real estate with creative finance, but I buy businesses with creative finance, vehicles with creative finance. And we are the most creative people when it comes to financing real estate deals, financing business deals, et cetera. Super grateful for our community, Sub2, Gator, Top Tier TC, leading the industry nationwide. We did $5 billion in transactions last year, all within the Sub2 community, $5 billion in transactions, which is just absolutely insane. Tonight, we were supposed to have a guest. I don't see him in the backstage, so he might have forgotten about it, but we had a guest that was asking us about, hey, Pace, I feel overwhelmed. I need to find some clarity in my business. And so tonight, I might just do some Q&A out of the side chat. Okay. What we might do, here's what we should do. I'm going to invite people in the side chat that are over there on the YouTube channel. I'm going to copy the link to get into the show. And if you want to come into the backstage and ask me a question live, then we can do that while I'm waiting for people to jump into the, the, the backstage. Now, don't click on the link if you don't have a question. Oh, I love that. YouTube is usually, uh, YouTube does not want me to give you the link. Hold on. Let me go over to the YouTube live stream and give you the link just right there in YouTube, just right directly in there. Um, again, guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, recently, we've had a lot of success in our businesses. Creative Finance is dominating 2023. It's going to continue to dominate 2024. Interest rates are uh, actually went up last month. We are now somewhere around 7%. Not really important to us because we are not using interest rates the way that most people do. Um, thank you guys, everybody that's over on the YouTube channel. I'm giving you guys a link in the side chat. I will pin it right now. If you guys want to come in, ask me a question. It's a weird little link. It says streamyard.com, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, come in, hang out with me, ask me a question. Let's do it live. We've got usually... This show gets about 800 to 1,000 live people every single Monday night. Thank you guys for that. Thank you for taking the time. I know it's late Monday night. For those of you on the East Coast, not only will I be on the East Coast in a couple of weeks, but you guys are, it's 10 o'clock. Jay Pride says, Pace, I'm in the backstage. No, you are not, Jay Pride. You are in the backstage on Wholesale Hotline, my friend. Come over here, click, a diff click the different link. The, the link you should have clicked is the one that I just gave you right there. It's in the side chat. My team must have given you the wholesale hotline link, Jay Pride. Come and hang out with me. 
and uh, we'll focus on you tonight, navigating your over your feelings of being overwhelmed, finding a little bit of clarity. I feel like everybody needs a little bit of one-on-one. -on -one. No matter how good I've done at building community and uh, leading the industry, our community leads the industry in transactions, no matter how good we do at that, it seems as if people don't want to listen to advice that's being given to somebody else as if it was advice given to them. They want the advice directly given to them. Pace, I want you to see me. I want you to understand, okay? I want you to understand me, see me, understand my situation because I know that you are talking to that other person and it should have been advice for me, but I reject all of that advice. I want to be told exactly to me, myself and I. So while we are waiting for Jay Pride to click the correct link, that's not his fault. My team gave him the wrong link, I believe. My team gave him the wholesale hotline link, not the uh, get creative link. Blake Whiting just joined sub two today, bro. Welcome to the welcome to the community. Hey, thanks for having me on. Um, how many years in real estate until you were no longer overwhelmed and found clarity? Um, that's a great question. Um, and as a newbie, I want I want to be very clear with everybody here. Thank you for this question, Blake. Inside of sub two, you're going to get overwhelmed tremendously. It's actually my job to overwhelm you with so many Zooms. We have 39 Zooms a week. In the beginning, you're going to go, which one should I attend? Which direction should I go? You need to understand your avatar first and foremost. That's like first piece of homework. Understand your avatar. Do you know what your avatar is yet? I uh, No. Okay. There's a four-hour training inside of the community called the avatar training. Go and take that avatar training as fast as you possibly can, and you need to understand yourself. The avatar training is based on your personality type. It's based on your budget. It's based on your current socioeconomic background. It's based on your mindset because a lot of people have broken mindsets. A lot of people don't believe success is meant for them. I'm one of those people. I'm surprised every time I get to another level, I'm like, wait, hold on a second. This is weird. I'm not supposed to be here. In fact, Blake, a lot of times I've tried to self-sabotage my success. Even, I'm not exaggerating, even in the last six months, I find myself sabotaging myself um, because I, do, I subconsciously do not believe that I'm worthy of the current success level that I'm at right now. I felt that way when I first got my first deal. I felt that way when I was given the opportunity to get into the industry. I felt that way the entire freaking way. And then you just wake up one day and you realize, wait, hold on, maybe that's just the equation. I'm always gonna feel like I'm an imposter. I, I'm always gonna feel that way. And if that's the case, cool. I'm just gonna live with it, right? Um, Leonard Lay says, is the avatar training for sub two or is it in Gator two? If you're in Gator, you're one avatar, it's called Gator. If you are in sub two, there's 21 other avatars. There's so many other ways to be successful besides Gator. Gator is seven different strategies, a lot of different ways to make money. But if you join Gator, you are the Gator avatar. Um, okay, so Blake, to answer your question specifically, I feel overwhelmed even to this day. It's a different level of problems that you run into. So I'll give you some problems I'm currently dealing with right now that you won't, you don't deserve to have the questions. I, or you don't deserve, you have not earned the problems that I have today. You have to go earn. This is an interesting thing. I think you should write this down. It's a different mindset. You don't get rid of problems. You just simply upgrade yourself to deserve better ones. You don't eliminate problems you upgrade yourself to deserve bigger and better problems because the bigger problem you solve, the more money you make, right? Um, Liliana says, um, you can be more than a gator only. Yes, you can be. I'm also a gator. I'm just saying, Liliana, that if you joined gator, that is the only avatar training you need specifically. If you want other avatar training, then you should be inside of sub two. Go make money in gator. Go do the thing, okay? So, Here's some problems I'm currently faced with today. And then I'll re rewind and I'll talk about the problems I have at your level, okay? Problems I have today. Trusting team members to take high-level decisions without me, so I'm not in every single Zoom. Um, trying to cover a payroll that's half a million dollars every single month. Um, trying to take the community to another level. Trying to innovate and create new ways of doing things that have never done before, been done before requires stress, pressure, failure, all sorts of things. And I can't be involved in everything. I, I, I wake up in the morning and I have a big ball of anxiety in my right shoulder every single morning because I think, why am I no longer involved in these things? 
and I have to have somebody above me say, well, you have to upgrade yourself in order to get to this level and you have to have other people take care of those things. Those people, Blake, nobody, 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 nobody has been able to do as good of a job on acquisitions, dispositions, building relationships with agents, brokers, all of that stuff as me. And so there's multiple times in my business where I had to just know that it's going to be done 60% as well as I could ever do it and be okay with that, which means now two people, two payrolls have to be paid for just to accommodate what I could do by myself. And you're a blue collar guy. You probably grew up blue collar, right? I did. Yes. Okay. So your, your dad, what'd your dad do? The general contractor. Okay. My dad, a general contractor too. So what do our dads think still probably to this day is like, if it's going to be done right, it needs to be done by me. Yep. Right. And so we grew, we grew up that way as well. Like we grew up working hard. One thing I can tell you about you, Blake, is you're, you're a blue collar boy. Nobody needed to, nobody needs to tell you today that hard work pays off. That's not something I need to tell you. Correct. Correct. Okay. There are other people bless. Thank your mom. Thank your dad. There are other people that their biggest problem, Blake, is they grew up in a family that did not teach work ethic. Your family is nothing about nothing about anything else except for work ethic. So you got the cheat code. I think I got the cheat code, which is work ethic. So let's go back to your actual question. You'll never stop being overwhelmed, which is what I, I'll tell you some words that only poor people say. Okay. I've, I, I've met a lot of people, thousands and thousands and thousands of people more than anybody else I know. I meet a lot of people from basic homeless, almost homeless level to billionaire status. I have a lot of billionaire friends. What are some words that multimillionaires, because being a millionaire is not cool anymore, okay? If you're not worth $10 million or more, don't call yourself a millionaire in my my, my opinion. Like it, the, the economy's changed, right? Um, inflation has changed. So people from $10 million all the way up into the billion category, I'll tell you some things that they do not say. One word you will never hear a successful people say is I'm overwhelmed. You'll never hear that ever. They will never, ever, ever say that. They understand that you are required to have more work on your plate than you are capable of handling. And they understand the way to overcome being overwhelmed is to one, understand you'll never be able to fully accomplish that. Two, you need to upgrade your ability to delegate and three, you need to become more efficient with your time through hard work. And one of my mentors, he's, he's a billionaire. He says, everybody says work smart, not hard. He says, you don't deserve to work smart until you have worked hard, right? It's like, what, what kind of, your dad was a builder, right? Correct. So he could build the house 10 times faster today than he could have 20 years ago, I imagine. 100%. Right? So he now today can work smart because he 25, 35 years ago worked incredibly hard, made thousands of mistakes to ultimately become more and more efficient. And now people look at him and they go, oh, must be nice. You know all the answers. Yeah, because I worked really hard in order to deserve to work very, very smart. So he, rich people never say, I'm overwhelmed. I've never heard that out of their mouth. They don't use the word disappointed. I've never heard a rich person or a successful person say, I'm disappointed. Why? Because disappointed means that you had false expectations. Rich people actually understand that they shouldn't have expectations that especially built up ones. It's usually poor people that are like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to go buy a book and this book's going to change my life. That's a poor person's mentality, right? I'm going to go to the seminar and this, I don't have to do anything. The seminar is going to solve all my problems. That's a poor, poor, poor person's mindset, right? So th those are a couple of things. Another word that rich people never say is frustrated. They, I've never heard a rich person say, I'm frustrated. Poverty, that's a poverty mindset. I also never hear rich people blame anybody but themselves. Crazy stuff. And I had to kind of learn this all the hard way. So let's go back to the beginning of my journey. Mm -hmm. I, if I could give myself different advice than what other people were giving me, the advice I would have given myself in the beginning of my journey was it's not about the deal. And I want you to write this down, Blake. It's never I, I about mean, the, oh, perfect. Love this. It's never about the deal. It's always about the skill set, the relationships, and the resources that the deal gives me. 
that I should be seeking. And what do I mean by that? All the projects. So Blake, the first deal I ever did was a $25,000 assignment. I write about it in my book. People have heard the story a hundred times. The thousands of deals I've done along the way, where is that money on my first deal? Where is it? Is it in one of my bank accounts? No, I paid bills with it. It's gone. The money is gone. But what is still there is the, are the skill sets I acquired, the understanding in the, of the industry, the relationships I acquired through private money lenders, title companies, et cetera, and the resources I acquired like contractors and other relationships of vendors that I needed in order to be successful. So I would tell you, you take, think about this. I look at my portfolio today, 2000 rentals, 182 of them I'm partnered with the sub two community on, which is cool. The other 1800 are me, myself, and I, I don't have any partners in them. I look at those and I go, I could lose it all. I could lose it all today and I would not even worry. Why? Because I have the confidence and the understanding that I acquired through skill sets, relationships, and resources that I could start anywhere in the world, anywhere in the country. You tell me a market and I could go make money today. That did not come from making money on a deal. That came from working a deal and a lot of times working it incorrectly and being overwhelmed for a long period of time. So I would tell you, um, being overwhelmed took me a couple of years before I felt that confidence. And so really what you're looking for is at one point you go, the feeling of overwhelmed goes away once I have the confidence to make money at any point. Okay. If I tell you, Blake, I'm strapping a bomb to your chest right now. And that bomb says 10 hours and I press start on that bomb and it's strapped to you. And you have 10 hours to get a deal. Otherwise that bomb goes off. Do you have the confidence that you would be able to get a deal? Yes. Okay, great. Then you should never be overwhelmed. Do you remember me from Saturday? I do. Yeah. I appreciate what you said. That's why I joined sub two just now. Oh, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Oh, yep. Welcome. Welcome to sub two. So the cool thing is that you have a lot of live support. And I would tell you also, one of the biggest things in my life that I've learned is that so many people from the nine to five mentality, me included, we avoid problems because we are trained to avoid problems. And what I teach the community is go create problems so that you actually have something to solve. And a problem would be something as minuscule as I have a lead that has an objection I don't know how to handle. So how would I handle that? How would I solve that problem in the sub two community? What I would do, Blake, is I would go in Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, Wednesday morning, Friday morning, whatever morning it, it is. And I would jump into a role playing session with other sub two community members and say, hey, guys, I have this objection. How do I overcome it? That is a thousand times better to have a live problem than a fictitious, non-existent, hypothetical bullshit question. And I see a lot of people that are new. They have all these questions. The reality is they need to go create real problems so that they can go ask real questions that give them real solutions to a tangible problem. So, you know, it's like if somebody asks your dad, how do I swing a hammer? Your dad's going to go, okay, am I on a ladder? Am I on the ground? Am, am I doing it into wood? Am I pounding into metal? Am I pounding into, into concrete? What am I doing? Like there's so many questions before your dad appropriately answers that question, right? So it's the same thing when somebody says, how do you, how do you do X, Y, and Z? I'm like, oh my gosh, you're asking the wrong questions. You, you obviously don't have a deal. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean deal. I mean, like you don't have a lead. You don't have a problem. You don't have a seller that has said, hey, I have an objection to this, or I have an objection to that, or what have you. So the number one thing I would be doing when I'm new is stack as many problems as you possibly can. You're not going after a deal. You're not going after income. You are going after skill sets, relationships, and resources. And the way to do that is to create real problems. So now what you now what you do is you go, all right, you already know that that's the thing. I need to stack problems because the more problems I have to solve, the more money I can make by solving those problems. Okay, cool. So problems are not something to, uh, to ignore or to 
avoid. Problems are things to run straight and directly into, okay? Holy moly. I, and, and I wish somebody taught me that when I was in my 20s, when I was in my early 30s. Now I'm like, okay, well, I know I have to, I make money because I solve problems all day long. And so one problem is the seller's objection. Let's come up with another problem. Another problem is I have so many problems with sellers and real estate agents, meaning objections and leads and opportunities that I'm not closing on, that now my biggest problem, because now you've upgraded your problems, you now have a problem of, I need to hire somebody on my team. That's another problem, right? I have to now learn that skill set. So one of the merit badges that we're working on inside of some of sub two, what do you are, you are in for a treat in sub two. I promise you, I hate mentorship programs. I hate coaching programs. I hate all that whole industry. We do not have a mentorship and we do not have a, a course. We have a community. Yes, there's a course. That mm -hmm. course is a, an appetizer to the actual community. The community then lives on and we do semesters and merit badges for life. Like for in, we have eight years of merit badges lined out inside of sub two. One of those merit badges is how to make your first hire. Okay, so now you have a hire. Now you have another problem. Your problem is, well, how do I make sure my person is actually doing the job I hired them to do? I've never been in this situation before. So literally the rest of your life has been is going to be nothing but an upgrade of your problems on a daily basis. There's a quote from one of David Goggins books. I think he, I forget what he said exactly, but it was like something along the lines of it never freaking ends. It never ends. <laughs> yeah. It never, it never ends. The, um, what I would, I tell people all the time, um, first off, I'm very grateful because I started off in a very painful con construction world. I didn't, I, I, I now look at my life. I'm like, I don't feel like I work. I am obviously working to somebody's, you know, argument, but I don't feel like I'm working compared to what I used to do. I feel like I'm in, on vacation every day. However, I get all these problems I've never been interfaced with that I have to solve on a daily basis, which is fun. And so it never ends. My wife told me the other day, she's like, so when do you think it ends? I, get, I said, the day I die. That's when it ends. And the second as a man, sorry for the women, I'm not trying to ex exclude you, but I am a man, so I'm speaking on my own experience. The second you realize that your job in life is to be a slave, and what do I mean by that? You're a slave to your responsibility. You're a slave to your, to your duty. You're a slave to, to bills and all of these types of things. And as quickly as you can realize that and own that and love that and be grateful for that responsibility because there's other men out there that avoid all responsibility. They avoid all duty. They avoid all sorts of things. And guess what else they do? They avoid honor. They avoid triumph. They, they avoid overcoming things and, and, and winning, right? So I'm so grateful that I get to serve and I get to be a servant to my duties, my responsibilities, my family, my wife, my children, those types of things. And I, 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 I take the, I, I give it the most respect. So the, the moment you realize that that is your lot in life and that you can have a lot of fun with it instead of grovel, complain, and try to avoid it like a lot of men, I think that we have a problem with the male world right now where men, um, our country primarily is trying to demasculate men. And that's a problem. So men are hiding who we really are right? We are protectors. We are providers. And, you know, there's women in here too, that also identify with that. You don't have to be a male or female to be, to understand and identify with what I'm talking about. So, um, I take full responsibility of those things. I love it. I am excited for it. And then I go, how can I be the best servant I possibly can be? And that requires small acquisitions of skills along the way. So every day is like, okay, need to hire another person, need to hire another, this, Okay, well now, bro, there's a point in your life, Blake, I hope for you, there's a point in your life where you'll go, I need to hire a CEO to run my organization because this has gotten so big. I've, you know, four years ago, I'd never run, ran, hired a CEO. I have a CEO that makes 40 grand a month. That's crazy. There was a point in my life, okay, there was a, a point in my life when I was 22 years old where I said, if I could just make five grand a month, I would be set for life. So when you hear people say, oh, you have a mindset problem, that was a mindset I had 
That was currently the, the level of understanding I had of the world. The options that were available to me made me believe that I was only worthy of $5,000 a month. But as I've acquired skill sets and, and relationships and resources and new levels of understanding and new options, I now am like, I should be making $5,000 an hour. I should be making $5,000 every 30 minutes. And so you have to upgrade those things. You upgrade your problems, your ability to deal with them. Okay, amazing. So let's go back to just starting level. You have to understand where you're currently at. And you also have to be okay with being patient. So you look at a guy like me and you go, okay, he's figured it all out. No, I haven't. I'm figuring out things along the way that I've never interfaced with. And I hope to be the guy in the jungle and the machete chopping down the tree so you guys can quickly run up behind me and, and cut a lot of the learning curve that took me seven, eight years to accomplish. It only take you 24 months, right? So I look at it and I go, if I had to start all over, I'm Blake Whiting. I'd ask myself a couple of questions. Guys, this is all for everybody as well. I've asked myself the question of, do I have a budget for marketing, okay, that I would be okay spending monthly without getting a deal for six months? So let's let, this was my, when I got into the industry, somebody asked me this question, her name was um, Bethany. She says, how much money could you forego every single month and not get a deal, but spend money on marketing for leads? And I said, $5,000. And she goes, okay, great. And you have no anxiety or stress that if you lose that $30,000 and you don't get a deal during that six months, but you've acquired a, a higher level of understanding of the industry, you've made a lot of mistakes, you've made friends, relationships, you've gotten new resources that you didn't have before, would that $30,000 be an equal trade-off of that level of understanding, confidence in, around calling sellers and all of those things? And I said, wow, what an amazing way to frame this. She said, yeah, because I see everybody else has this expectation of themselves of I'm trying to get into the business and get a deal. That's all they're trying to do. I'm trying to get a deal. She says, the thing is you get deals because you acquire skill sets, relationships, and resources, and people are not paying attention to that. They're just trying to hammer a deal, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, they're just hammering a deal because that's their only level of expectation. And if that's their level of expectation, what's the word that billionaires don't use? disappointed, frustrated. They don't use these words because they're not trying to play the same game as a poor person. Poor people play the game that ends in frustration and disappointment. Rich people play the game of I'm acquiring skill sets, relationships, and resources along the way so that in, in six months, regardless of whether I get a deal or not, I'm a different person. You are not, the, the main deal that you are trying to acquire is a new man that you do not recognize in six months. F contracts, F monetization, F all of that stuff. It comes, ironically, if you just say, I want to become a different man. I want to become a man that is good at talking on the phone. I want to become a man that is great at finding leads. I want, I'm getting chills thinking about this, to, honestly. It's, I'm, my entire body hair is growing right now because I'm, I'm thinking about how special this thought process actually is, and I wish everybody had it. I, I want to become a man that's good at talking on the phone. I want to become a man that's good at comping. I want to be a man that can start answering other questions of other people in the community that I had six months prior. I want to be a go-giver. I want people to, have a, to know my name because I'm so active. I'm so positive. I want people to want to JV with me. And more, most important than anything else, I want people in my community to champion me because I am such a positive force inside of our community. If that was your only goal, for six months, it's physically impossible for you to not get, get paid. It's physically impossible. Okay. So let's say that my answer is $5,000. <laughs> what I'm going to, what I'm going to do with that $5,000 and I'm going to, I'll go back to a $0 budget as well. Okay. Typically people that have $5,000 to spend every month for six months and not worry about the out outcome are people that also are working their butts off all day long and don't have time. So there's a hundred different avatars you could choose. I would, Blake, in the very beginning, I would argue one of the best um, things that you could ever do is actually go work for somebody else's company that's inside of sub two, okay? You've got Jasper Sun. I don't, you should write his name down, Jasper Sun, J-A-S-P-E-R, Sun. Jasper got his first deal, made 9,100 bucks from a sub two student who helped him out. 
And then Jasper's like, what's next? I go, Jasper, you're really young. You don't have a lot of experience in, in the entrepreneur world. Go and join somebody else's team for six months. Bro, he's been on that team now for a year and a half. He's gotten $43,000 deals, $30,000 deals, $20,000 deals, and he's a 22-year-old kid, okay? So Myron, okay? Myron is also a team leader. Myron joined Sub2 two, two and a half years ago, now owns a little over 100 doors, okay? Myron is a great leader, but guess what Myron had to go through? Same thing I had to go through, which is becoming a different man in your first six months. That's your goal. Your first goal is I want to become a different man. First off, hopefully I can be a little intense here. I, don't, I shouldn't say the P word. I'll say sissy. Don't be, a, don't be a freaking sissy and complain about not getting a deal. Be proud of the fact that you're acquiring skill sets and relationships. You know what I do almost every day, Blake? I write down things I learn, right? And I go, this is, these are little etchings of how I've chiseled away the rough edges of pace. Every time I write down a note of something I've learned, an experience I've encountered, I write it down. I imagine it's like me chiseling the rough edges of marble and I'm becoming more and more smooth over time. That's what my pen is to me is a chisel. And so take notes. These are your, this is your chisel. You're becoming a different person. So the main goal is become a different person. Okay. Now forget about the mindset stuff. You got the mindset stuff done, right? So think about this now, $5,000. If I have a $5,000 budget, you know what I'm doing? I'm probably going to go to another sub two student that's also spending $5,000 a month. This is why we built a community and said, hey, how are you allocating your $5,000? And what if I have leads that I generate through spending this $5,000 that I can't close? I don't want this money going to waste. Does somebody want to partner with me on these things that can close the deals? So for example, I can see a handful of people right now that I would trust, Myron Briley, Don Walker. I can see them in the side chat. They will help you close those deals, okay? So don't just go blindly spend money and generate leads and you're brand new, yeah, you have support. Yeah, you have live Zooms every night. Yeah, people will call your seller, sellers for you on Zoom inside of Sub2, but you need to have some confidence, some accountability partners, a battle buddy that you go, hey, guys, my name's Blake. I'm spending money on leads. Who wants to actually close these leads for me that's a closer inside the community that's been in the community for a couple of years and is doing a lot of active deals? Okay, great. By the way, every time I talk to somebody else, I give a different piece of advice. I don't think your route is $5,000 a month and I'm going to go back to a $0 a month budget in just a minute, okay? All right, so I now have made a connection in the community. Um, I also would remember something very important. This is why real estate mentorships and, and um, courses are bullshit. Why? Because no mentor or mentorship or um, course can give you an understanding of the entire United States. Real estate in the United States is a localized business, which means you have to have friends in that local business, in that local industry, that local geographic area that are doing deals inside the community to give you localized knowledge that one person at the top can never give you, right? Don Walker and Myron Briley know more about DFW than I do. I might own 30 rentals there, but I'm not there every day. That's not where my lead source is coming from. So the reason why you have a community is to get that localized knowledge, okay? So let's say I'm spending five grand. I'll hypothetically throw out a proposed potential budget of $5,000 that would generate enough leads that would give me enough money. I could A, buy PPL, okay? PPL means pay per lead. You can just go to a company, they'll charge you $300 for every quality lead, which means a seller says, hey, I'm ready to sell, somebody call me. You pay $300 for that lead. It's called PPL, pay per lead. So that means you're gonna get you know, what, what is that? 5,000, you're, you're going to have 15 to 20 leads. Okay. 15 to 20 leads for that $5,000. And if you're a great closer, you'll get one to two contracts out of that. You're not a great closer, which, which means you should be connecting with other people in the community that are great closers. Okay. Here's another budget, $5,000. I would hire two virtual assistants from a company called startvirtual.com they charge, they cost about $1,100 per virtual assistant. So that's $2,200. Those are full-time Filipinos that are making cold calls for you all day long. Those Filipinos will average two to three leads per day each. 
Okay. They will set these leads up on your calendar and they will say, Hey, Blake, when you get home from your nine to five job, you've got three sellers that are willing to, that are ready to talk to you. They've got these situations. They've got this going on. Start virtual helps you line all that out. So you don't have to worry about how to train them, how to do this. Start virtual. The reason start virtual exists is for you to call start virtual, get on a call. They'll help you hire the virtual assistants. They'll walk through what CRM you need, what software you need. Like it's a cheat code. Okay. Your other $2,800 that is left over, you're going to be spending money on data, skip tracing, and getting phone numbers for sellers that are interested, okay? That's a $5,000 budget. Now you're generating, let's say, 21 working days in a month, two VAs. You're generating 50 leads a month for you to talk to, okay? There's a, there's a student in our program. Her name is Chava, C-H-A-V-A. Chava, I gave her very similar advice. You know what, what happened? She said, Pace, I have no leads. I've been in sub two for three months. I have no leads. And I know it's because I'm not doing anything. What do you suggest I do? And I go, do you have a budget? She goes, yeah, yeah. Okay, I tell her the same thing I just told you. Go to startvirtual.com, hire start virtual assistants. Guess what happens in 30 days? She comes in and she goes, you were right. I have a completely different set of problems. I have so many leads that I can't even call all of them. And I said, stop for just a moment, Chava. Be grateful that you have accomplished what you couldn't accomplish 30 days ago. And that's the problem with so many people is they don't stop and they go, wow, I broke through a problem. I broke through a problem that me as a newbie did not know the answer to. And now I know that answer and nobody can steal that from me. I know how to generate leads. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. She's like, dude, thank you for that. Thank you for making me think that way. So I said, you should have you should have paired up with somebody before you started generating leads. Now you have 50 leads that people have got to catch up on. And some of those leads have, got, have already sold their properties because you haven't followed up in time. Okay, well, now you got a different, you see how I'm saying? Like your problems will upgrade as you upgrade yourself. Okay, so that's one way of going about it, teaming up with the community and what whatnot. Let's go to a zero budget, okay? What I would do is I would write down, Blake, 18 minute challenge. Okay. In the community, we did this really fun challenge in December and people are still doing it super active and doing it. The 18 minute challenge was in December. I said, all right, guys, everybody else quits towards the end of the year. So we're going to do three zooms this, this, um, December where we all pair up on teams, team leaders. We had, we got about a hundred team leaders in sub two and let's get 10 sub two students on those sub two leaders teams. Those sub two leaders are all going to have their own lead generation, right? Some are after foreclosures, some are after expired listings, some are doing on market, some are every single investor in sub two has a different business model. So if you're a newbie, join the team that is doing the lead generation that you resonate with. So for example, there's some teams that have Multifamily, right? Their, their focus is multifamily. Blake, if you're like, I don't want to focus on multifamily right now, then for heaven's sakes, don't join that team, okay? If you are wanting to focus on foreclosures and understand foreclosures and negotiating with foreclosures or um, let's say expired listings or let's say probate or whatever it is, we have such a diverse community of leaders that are doing deals on these specific spokes in the real estate industry you can choose to join any one of those teams and go, I will dedicate 18 minutes a day, 18 minutes a day to your team. Now, why 18 minutes? 18 minutes sounds like a random number. It's not. Um, Jesse Itzler, he had this big quote. He said that if you did anything 18 minutes a day, by the end of the year, you would be world class at that thing. You would be one in the top 1% if it was only 18 minutes a day. If you ran for 18 minutes a day, if you worked out for 18 minutes a day and you did it for a straight year, would you not completely become a different person? Yes. Same thing with, let's say you join Nita, Nita Patel's team. Nita Patel focuses on foreclosures. If you go join her team and you only call foreclosures 18 minutes a day, that's it. Would you not become world-class at foreclosures by the end of the year? Yes, you would be. So if you have no money and you have lacking, you have a lack of time, then I would plug into somebody else's existing team and say, give me guidance. 
be the, it, now think about this. Let's say I join um, Myron's team, for example. Okay. Um, I mean, we have a lot of our, our, everybody that's in the community, like Colin Yep, for example, amazing community leader. He's awesome. Love him. I could go on and on and on in the side chat with all the people I love in here. So many amazing people. Ricky Hines, uh, guys, I love you. I appreciate you. I, I don't want to call everybody out because it could turn into a show of me just calling people out. But let's let's take Myron, for example, because Myron's here. And I'm partners with Myron on a 30-unit multifamily deal. Love the man. He's awesome. Okay. When Myron comes to town, Myron drives my Prius for a week. Like That's how close I am to Myron. That's how close we are as a community. That is what a community is about. So let's say I go join Myron's team. I know what Myron does. Myron does agent outreach and he blasts LOIs all day long. Do you know what an LOI is, Blake? I do not. Okay, an LOI is a letter. Of yeah, yeah there sorry. you go. You got it. So um, Facebook user says, it could be live on a different platform as well. Yes, we are primarily on my YouTube channel. We only have 15 people on the Creative Finance um, Facebook group. Um, page and we have 15 people on the Pace Morby Facebook page, but we have about 300 people over on YouTube. So come over on the YouTube channel. There's more people to connect with. Okay. So if you are working with Myron, I already know what Myron's going to have you do. He's going to say, Hey, Blake, I need you to dedicate. He won't say 18 minutes. He's going to ask you for an hour, but let's just say it's 18 minutes. Okay. Um, George DTT DDT says, how can I start a, a tiny home community or committee? Committee? You mean community. Go to landwatch.com, click on the, here, watch, watch, let me show you how to do this, okay? Let, let me show you how simple this is. Watch watch how fast I teach you something, and, you're, and by the end of me teaching you this, you're going to go, wow, I now know a thing I did not know before. Be grateful for those moments, right? Be grateful for the moments that you have an epiphany, a new level of understanding. Watch how simple this is. Let me go to landwatch.com for all you tiny home community people. I'm going to go to um, United States. Just click on United States. There's um, owner financing land for sale, 13,509 listings, Blake. So if I want to build a tiny home community, 5.5 .5 acres in Fr Fruitland, Utah, don't you think I could go to this person and do a zero down deal for $250,000? Absolutely. Same thing here. Same thing here. Same thing here. You want to build anything. Look at all the owner financing stuff, guys. You want to go buy 2.2 .2 acres for $200 a month. That's probably not the deal I would buy. But there are 13,000 listings across the country on owner financing that you can go and buy. Okay. You do not need money to do anything in real estate. All right. So there you go. Myron Briley says, yes, exactly. Spend just one hour a day with our team and you will definitely get a deal. This is why we built a community is because Myron will say, Hey, do lead generation for me now. How does Myron benefit from this? Myron benefits from this because he gets to practice what we preach in our community, which is passing the torch to the next person. Myron's probably helped 50 to 100 people get their first deal, maybe more. Okay, I'm just guessing. So what is awesome is that Myron will go, all right, Blake, what hour a day do you want to work and dedicate that I know you're going to do the thing? What he's going to do is he's going to sign an agreement with you, okay? It's going to be an employment agreement, and it's going to be you get paid $0 on your first deal. I don't know. Every student is different. Great. Every sub-two student is different. He could do, I'm going to pay you $0 on your first deal because I'm going to show you I'm going to show you the ropes, right? I'm going to actually help you plug in and show you what this community is all about. He could say, I'll pay you 50-50. If I was him, I would not pay you 50-50, right? Zero is fine with me. Most people in our community have the mindset that zero is fine with them. I don't think Myron will actually pay you zero, but I think everybody in sub two should pay newbies on their first deal zero dollars. Why? Because the emphasis should not be on the money. The emphasis should be on the man that you become. And that should be the most invaluable priceless object that Myron could have ever help you find, right? A new version of yourself. I've helped Myron become a new version of himself. And what's awesome is that Myron's helped me become a new version of myself. That's what a community is all about, right? So Myron would say, all right, Blake, let's do an agreement. Let's have a, a conversation of what does success look like? What does failure look like? Okay, failure looks like you tell me you can do something for an hour. You don't do it for an hour. Guess what happens? Next week, I'm not going to give you any more leads. That's what failure looks like. And we're going to part as friends. Okay. 
This is what's cool. Uh, John Hur says, I have yet to do a deal by myself. Every deal has been deal done with another community member. I'm the exact same way. I don't do deals by myself. I always JV. Okay. Can I say something really quick if you don't mind? Of course. So I've, I've done six deals, did real estate. Um, but the big reason I came here and joined sub two is my assignment was, he was like 5,000 on average. Yeah. And it was just not big enough. Like I, not, not the money, but just, I wanted that community. I wanted to be a part of something bigger, not just give a deal to an investor, yeah. but just make it. So I'm doing something fun with friends that I'd even do for free just because I enjoy it. Yeah. That's you're in the right place for sure. And so also I am using you for the people in the side chat that are not, that don't, otherwise I would have stopped and said, Blake, what's your budget? What's your goal? What's your this? I'm using you to answer questions for people in the side chat. You are basically my catalyst, which is awesome. So I, you know, I would go join a team and say, all right, I want to see what you're doing. And I would dedicate my time to that team for, let's say six, I would mi minimum six months. Why? Because I would go to Myron and go, hey, Myron, I want to dedicate myself to you to six months on your team. And at that point in six months, will you help me start my own business? Will you give me advice? Can I text you and call you? That's why we have this community. Now, Blake, you could skip all of this right now. You know how to generate leads. You know how to do stuff. You know, you could skip the line and just go, hey, guys, who wants to buy my deals? Who can help me with my leads on creative finance deals? Who can call on my sellers and call my, my creative finance leads? Um, where sellers don't want cash or they can't, you know, there's no equity or whatever else. You can go through all of those things. And this is where in the very beginning of sub two, you're going to be overwhelmed because there's so many opportunities and so many relationships that you could go grapple onto, right? So for you in your specific situa situation, you're like, I understand title and escrow. I understand purchase contracts. I understand assigning. I understand wholesale. I understand all of those things. I want my average assignment fee to go from 5,000 to 15,000. Okay, how do I do that? Well, let's find the people in the community that their average assignment fee is $15,000. You could go to Alejandro Alvarez. You could go to Kevin Cho. You could go to Myron Briley. I, I bet you Myron's average assignment fee is probably between 10 and $20,000 for sure. And so you could go to him and go, I want to see how you're doing it. Are you focusing on one market? Are you blasting out? Are you in seven different markets? How are you generating your leads? You could go and collaborate and become friends. Blake, what city, what market are you in? I live in St. Louis. Okay, St. Louis. Perfect. We have a lot of community members in St. Louis. And what I would do is I'd go into St. Louis and go, all right, who's crushing in St. Louis? If that, Do you want to market in St. Louis? I would be okay with St. Louis or other states. I grew up in Arizona. Hmm. Arizona is more competitive than St. Louis, but when it's more competitive, you have more buyers and you have more opportunities to JV with people than you do in St. Louis. So I look at JV as an, or um, competition as a good thing to collaborate. Other people outside of our community don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. So St. Louis is probably a good spot. I also would make sure you show up to the physical meetups in St. Louis. And I would say, hey, can I sit in somebody's business? Can I go to on like Myron? I'll get Myron's here, so I'll keep picking on him. Myron, if somebody joins the community in DFW, Myron's like, hey, who wants to go on a ride along with me? Go to my appointments, go see our projects, go do stuff. Get in the car with somebody else. I just gave this a big Zoom a couple of weeks ago in sub two. I said, first thing that I would do in sub two, go to a physical meetup and ask whose project I can get boots on the ground to and how can I hang out with you and just be friends? That's like first thing I would do. St. Louis, go on somebody's project go to the physical meetup. It changes everything. It connects all the Zooms that we do, all the trainings that we do live to physicality. Like you now have 20, 20 people, 50 people, 100 people in your local market that you can rely on for money, for, hey, I'm on vacation. Can somebody go on this appointment for me? Hey, can somebody give me a, find a contractor? Who's, what lender is everybody using? Who's, you know, it's, and you're aggregating everybody else's skill sets, relationships, and resources to amplify your average assignment fee from 5,000 to 15,000. And then more importantly, within 12 months, you go, all right, it's time for Blake to start wholesaling four deals and keeping one. Mm -hmm. Who else is holding properties in St. Louis? Cool. You're holding properties in St. Louis. I'm, I want to use your same property manager. I want to use your, like, it's literally just the cheat code of doing all this kind of stuff. So one thing I would do, um, what's your schedule for work look like? I would, I did door-to-door -door sales, um, lost what I was doing last year and took three months of learning. And then I've just been all in on real estate, just learning and doing deals. Okay. Love uh, it. 
since August. So, so here's what I would do. I would go into the daily dial every morning this mor- this week. Mm-hmm. And I would connect with everybody in there that's doing role playing because those are all the the assassins, the people out they're out there calling, texting, door knocking, sending mailers. They're the ones that are having the conversations directly with sellers and directly with agents. I would mm-hmm. go into the the daily dial. There's 10 of them every week. And there's an East Coast daily dial and a, a West Coast daily dial. East Coast d- daily dial ha- happens at 5 a.m. Arizona time, which is 8 a.m. Eastern. West Coast Daily Dial happens at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Or I'm sorry, 7 a.m. Arizona time. Mm-hmm. And so you can go in there and there are all the assassins that are in there crushing. It's two, 300 people there every single morning, waking up early and role playing and, and sharpening. Iron sharpens iron is kind of the motto in there. Mm-hmm. And you'll meet the other people that are actively doing deals. Now, there's other Zooms that I would suggest you stay away from. Like Saturday morning, transaction coordination. You probably don't want to go to that, right? Well, hire that out. Yeah, you hire that out. Um, what I would also suggest you go to in the very beginning is you should understand how to comp better. I know you've been working on it for three months. We have a full-time employee inside of Sub2 that all he do- does is underwrite two hours a day for the community live. That's Bo's um, time slot. He's kind of middle of the day. And as a community member, you can now reach out to Bo and ask him any underwriting questions like, hey, will you underwrite this for me? Hey, will you look at this? Especially when you get into fourplexes, sixplexes, RV parks, mobile home parks, the things that are a little bit trickier, he will underwrite those. Then, I mean, there's Zooms that you're probably going to avoid as well. Like we have five Zooms a week that are all about buying businesses with creative finance. And you're like, yo, I'm just trying to do the real estate thing for right now. Avoid those five Zooms. They're going to be around in a year. They're going to be around in a year and a half. And guess who has access to those in a year and a half? Blake Whiting. (laughs) Don't get FOMO. Focus focus on your vision. So what I would also do, again, I would make a six-month goal. And I would say, what kind of man do I want to be? I want to be a man that is good at this, good at this, good at this, good at this, who has an average assignment fee of $11,721. Whatever that average assignment fee is, and focus your time and energy on going to the Zooms and connecting with the people that will help you get to that point. Beautiful. I don't, I can't thank you enough for just the attitude you have, the fact that you're a go-giver and just this whole conversation. I hope it helped people as much as it helped me. It, it did. I promise you. And, and you having this question is awesome. And we, bro, the, the greatest thing about our community is that we only attract go-givers and, you know, we get the occasional knucklehead, but we boot them out and we protect the community at all costs. And I have been so grateful to watch people meet in the community, get married, meet in the community, get married and have babies, meet in the community and their kids get their driver's license, meet in the community. I meet them and they invite me to their weddings, to their bat mitzvahs and all that kind of stuff. Like it's us living life together. And I get some of my influencer buddies are like, you're crazy. I'm like, for what? And they're like, being so accessible to your people. I go, that's the problem. They are my people. They are my friends, my family. And you look at your people like students. I look at my people like friends. And so it's hangout time. Like even our Q&A session every Tuesday night, we don't call it Q&A. We call it sub two family night. And it's everybody comes in. It's like a bonfire, ha- having a conversation around a bonfire, everybody sharing each other, like sharing deals. One thing I can tell you who somebody I'm really met, mad at right now is Colin Yep. I'm really mad at him. He's redeeming himself, but he did like 19 deals in six months or like 60 days inside of the community. Never once made a post about his wins. And I was like, Colin, go make 19 posts about those 19 deals, breaking down where did the deal come from? How much money did you make? He's like, I don't want to brag. I don't want to do this. I'm like, I promise you it will inspire other people. And then he sends me an email the other day. He says, because of those posts, I got an extra 15 JV deals because of those posts. <laughs> and I was like, that's yeah. why you share your wins, bro. You know? So what I would do, Blake, is I would go into the Facebook group and I'd say, hey guys, I've done six deals before. My average assignment fee is five thousand dollars. I'm in St. Louis. Um, he suggested I do this, this, and this. Who can I become friends with today? Mm-hmm. You'll get 50 people that reach out to you and you'll immediately go, How did I just make 50 friends over like a three-day mm-hmm. period? I did something similar in your free chat 
And I understand why you just want to work with people that are committed because I got probably 50 phone calls from people that are like, hey, can, can you I show me brain? how to do your huh? Can I pick your brain? Will you go to coffee with me? Um, can you help me do a JV deal? Like, I just need you to bring me a buyer and a seller and I'll, 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 I'll help you. You're like, okay, so you want me to do the whole deal? Well, yeah, just, just show me. Like, you don't mind showing me, right? Yeah, that's the free group is really challenging for me. I try not, I leave my students to go and run that and help that because what's cool about the free Facebook group is that the community members go in there and they practice what they've learned in sub two, right? Seller finance, sub two, um, wraps, novation agreements, lease options, all the cool creative finance things. They then go in there and answer questions and do deals with people. I mean, um, I would, I would imagine that Myron probably does a deal or two deals out of the free Facebook group every single month because people are basically not trained in there, but the challenge is they're also not committed. And so they, they are a lot of people in there are time wasters. So you will have the exact opposite feeling and, 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 um, experience inside of the sub two community. Mm -hmm. I think that was my biggest thing that was, um, that held me back from joining sub two earlier is I was like, I don't want to pay this much money for contracts and some Zoom calls. That was literally what I thought it was. Yeah, me too. I and would never you, want to do that either. Well, and when you roasted me over the coals on Saturday and then just poured your heart out to people, I'm like, oh, wow, this guy actually cares. Mm. And he literally just wants to provide as much value as possible. And that just blew me away. The thing is, I want to do deals with you, right? Like I see other people, these other, and they're my friends. And all they want to do is teach and sell some course. The cool thing about me is I have, I, I guess technically we have a course, but you, did you pay me, Blake? I did not. You paid a company called New Reach. I don't take any of that money. Mm -hmm. I make money by doing deals with people. I did $165 million in deals last year with people in the community, $165 million in deals last year with people in the community. So uh, this, this is the way, bro. Like, we all become successful. We all do more deals together. We get to live life together. We get to grow up together. And it's a freaking blast, bro. It's the best. And so I care. One, I am financially incentivized for people to be successful. And I'll, I'll get people to go, why would you give away all these secrets? I'm like, if I give away all these secrets, then I get to do more deals with people, you know, which is cool. Um, yeah, this is cool too. Uh, Daniel shot says, um, this community has made me better at commercial real estate. My day job learn every day and see a future. I didn't know was possible. That's what's cool about our community too, is that it's not just real estate. It's commercial real estate. It's mindset. It's how to be a better husband. It's how to manage your money better. We have a bookkeeping zoom every Monday where my bookkeeper teaches people how to manage their finances. Like it is so much more than just creative finance and wholesale and fixing and flipping. It's so much more. And Blake, a guy with your spirit is exactly who we're trying to attract. We're trying to attract people that are also natural go-givers that go, I want to be around other people that are givers because I want to shine as my natural self. And that's what our community is all about. Thanks again, Pace. I, I can't, I can't say enough. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Appreciate you so much. Guys, give it up for Blake in the comments, please. If you're in sub two, go and connect with him. He'll go, he'll go make a post today. Jay Pride, what's up, bro? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. We talked about being overwhelmed and all that kind of stuff today. Yeah. We heard a lot of that. Yes. That was uh, definitely encouraging knowing that I guess you should be overwhelmed if you, you know, want to be in this game. Well, uh, Jay, you seem like a really active guy, right? Yes. Okay. Are you, do, are you physically fit? Yes. Okay. How does a muscle grow? Does a muscle grow by me babying it or does a muscle grow by me actually destroying it to the point of failure that it has to repair itself to a stronger muscle? Correct. It has to repair itself to be, become a stronger muscle. So you're not on YouTube all the time or asking anybody in the fitness game going, hey guys, how do I get chiseled without doing any work? Correct. No, no. That would actually be crazy, right? <laughs> right. And, and have you ever, when you're work, I worked out twice today. I'm, I'm doing two workouts a day right now. So I ran five miles and worked out for 45 minutes. There's 15 to 20 points in your workout where you're like, F this mentally, right? Your body is overwhelmed. Your body wants to throw up, right? It's the same thing with real estate. You're going to feel overwhelmed in order to get, get, to get to that next level. In fact, in order for me to get to my next level physically, Right. You're wearing Dennis Rodman t-shirt, by the way. Shout out to Dennis Rodman. That guy's freaking yes. unbelievable. 
I mean, if you really look at the Chicago Bulls, like they were that he was the missing link to become the greatest team on on planet Earth. Like his defensive ability was insanity, you know. And anyway, you look at Dennis Rodman. That guy broke his back every single game, jumping, diving, doing everything. I'm, in fact, stand up. Let me see that shirt. Is that the jump, the shirt where he's diving for the ball? No. Oh, okay. You remember yeah, the one where he's fully vertical, like, right? A poster, yeah. That is so dope. Do you think Dennis Rodman ever once asked, how do I not be overwhelmed and still be in the NBA? No, heck no. He wouldn't no, in that. fact, him, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, they were like, what is the amount of work that no other competitor is willing to do? Give me that pathway, and that's the one I'm going to choose. In fact, Jay, I would suggest you read a book called The Obstacle is the way obstacle is the way the obstacle is the way got it okay will do and i and i and if i were you i would write that on my phone i would take a screenshot of it and i would go the obstacle is the way when something's challenging difficult has steps of friction moments that would break a normal human being i go perfect that's where i want to go mm -hmm. because number one the only people on the other side of that are the 1%. Yeah, so. You know what the 1% do really well, Jay? What's that? Collaborate and become friends with each other. And so it's the most fun environment on the planet. On the planet. It is so fun because guess what happens? 99% of people are not willing to do the work. And they feel the feeling of, oh my gosh, I'm getting to a point of failure. Like my muscles are getting to the point of failure. I'm shaking. Oh, I must be doing this too hard. I should take a break. No. In fact, the argument is stop being a sissy and do one more rep. Yeah. You're shaking. Perfect. That means it's working. Right. Mm -hmm. Same thing here is when I'm having a phone call with a seller, think about this. What if the objective now, Jay, do you know what kind of outreach or lead generation you want to do in your business? Or are you actively doing lead gen? I, I would like to do uh, buy and holds. Okay, you want to do buy and hold. Okay, well, that's really simple. Are you, do you want to skip to the line for buy and hold and just buy deals for my community members? Cause that's basically what I do now. No, I'm, I'm, I'm starting fresh, like generating deals or uh, leads. Okay. So do you, there's a couple of ways to look at this. Okay. Is, wow. Sometimes you just get some weirdos. So we got Laura Rhodes being insanity today. Laura Rhodes, you're nasty. I don't know what's going on there, but you know what? Okay, so let's talk about this. Let's say that I just wanted to skip the line and go straight to buy and hold, okay? You need to have an active income at a nine to five job in order to do that. Why? Because buy and hold, even if they, even if they cash flow, buy and hold does not pay off significantly for about 36 to 60 months. And I would make sure everybody out there writing, you should write that down. But let's say that I want to skip skip the line. I go, I don't want to generate the leads. I don't want to cold call. I don't want to learn how to negotiate. I don't want to build a team. I don't want to wholesale. I don't want to fix and flip. I literally just want to buy and hold. Well, Jay, one of the avatars in the sub two community is just literally called the buyer. That's your avatar where people will just bring you deals. Like I've bought deals from Myron. Um, I've bought deals from Don Walker right here. Don Walker actually bought her first deal. She made $17,000 off uh, sell, selling me a sub two deal in Texas. Did I have to cold call that seller? Did I have to deal with the agent? Did I have to deal with the paperwork? Did I have to deal with the follow-up, the negotiating, the title and escrow and all that kind of stuff? Or did Don just bring me the deal? Mm -hmm. Now you might ask, well, Pace, where'd the $17,000 come from? Well, this is part of being a buyer. I just found another person that has ca cash and that person and I partnered together. I got 50% of the deal. They got 50% of the deal. They brought all the money. And that's why my AI is giving me fireworks behind me right now. So on that deal with Don, let me, let me tell you something that's cool. Texas deal, I didn't have to bring any money to the table of my own. I didn't have to cold call the seller. I didn't have to negotiate with the seller. I didn't have to do the follow-up with the seller. It took her two months to close that deal, by the way. So when she made her $17,000, we can justify she deserved to make that $17,000 on her first sub two deal. She did a lot of work. Well, I didn't want to do all that work. I'd rather her just feed me deals that I can put in my portfolio that are going to cash flow and make me really wealthy. 
Well, let's say I'm brand new and I'm like, well, I don't have 17,000 plus the closing costs plus the other thing. Well, then if you really want to skip the line, Jay, then the, the skill set that you need to acquire is finding private money. Because I can tell you right now, people in the side chat right now, Justin Bozak, Myron Briley, all these people in the side chat, they all have deals and they will sell you deals. I've bought deals from them. Mm -hmm. You don't need, if, you, if your goal is, I want to be a buy and hold investor right now, then why go through a wholesale operation? Why go through ever doing any of those things? Why not allocate your time, energy, and resources to finding private money inside my community? You know how, many, you know how much private money we have inside the sub two community? I would guess a lot. It's insanity. Like your ability to raise money in the community is, in, is absolutely insanity. See, Myron Briley says we have 15 deals for sale right now. Do you need to go and find deals, Jay? No, I need to find private money lenders first. There you go. So leverage the sub two community and the Gator community to bring private money to you. Now, Jay, you could set up private money two different ways, okay? You could bring in a private money partner, which means they bring the money. You don't have a monthly payment to them. There's no interest involved in that money. They just get 50% of the deal and you get 50% of the deal. So when cash flow comes in, they get 50% of the cash flow. You get 50% of the cash flow. When the asset sells, now let's say in five years, Okay. Kevin Wynn, another person doing a lot of deals, Kevin and Jennifer Wynn, uh, husband, wife duo. Okay. KB says, I fund deals. She's a gator. Okay. So we have people in our community that are finding the deals. We have people in the community that are funding the deals. Jay, you just need to say, this is the market I want to buy in. This is the type of asset I want. And I need to just buy deals. You can skip all the bull, the baloney of being a deal finder. Just be a buyer. Yeah. That's what okay. I was doing. So um, the skill set is now um, structuring your private money and having conversations with private money lenders. Guess what else I teach? I teach how to do that. We have a six part course all inside of sub two that teaches how to find private money, how to structure the private money, how to pay them back, how to set up the relationship, all of those types of things. So the community is actively trading deals and lending money to each other. And they're not really having to go outside the community to find that private money. Tiger says, I have the money. <laughs> Joel Ship Shipley says, there are so many private money lenders here. Okay. Um, J Daniel says, is Colin yet at 20 deals yet? Yeah, Colin did 19 deals. Then he did another 15. So he's at like 34, I think, in just the last like six months. So now the skill set is finding private money lenders, not too hard in our community. Okay. communicating with them and partnering with them and structuring with them that benefits you and them. Then the next skill set is understanding your exit strategy. So what I do with my private money partners, Jay, is this, I go, look, when we sell the asset, you get paid your money back first and then we split what's left. But what I would prefer to do in my private money lenders or my private money partners is I keep the asset, but let's say interest rates come down in five years. I do a refinance, I pull their money out of the deal first, they get, they get paid first, and we keep the ownership at 50-50 on that asset. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. But Pace, the private money lender just got paid back. Why are they still at 50%? Because you're not, they're not a private money lender. They're a private money partner. Mm -hmm. And the way I would structure that deal is that they get their money back first, and when you keep the asset, you keep them at a 50% structure. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, there, there's uh, Justin Hoke. His wife, his wife Yatong, is one of my favorite community members. She's so amazing. She's very similar to you, Jay. That Yatong was like, so she, she's like six months into sub two. She's like, I'm, you know, I just, I'm struggling. Should I? Do I need to quit my job? And I was like, well, let me ask you a question. Do you love your job? She goes, I love my job. I go, then why would you quit your job? She's like, isn't that what we're supposed to do? I'm like, you're supposed to do what you want to do. What do you want? She says, I guess I just want to buy and hold. I'm like, how much money do you make? She's like, I make a quarter million dollars a year as a programmer and I work 20 hours a week. Wow. I'm like, then you're a buyer. Skip all the wholesaling, skip all the fixing and flipping and just be a buyer. And so there's Justin right there saying, we bought a great deal last year. It's been a major blessing. So there you go. Okay. KB says PMP, PML are the way to go.
So if you are, there's a lot of people in here that are younger that don't like their job, didn't like their job. I was one of those people. And so the reason I started in wholesaling and fixing and flipping is because I hated my job and I'd rather switch my job to wholesaling and fixing and flipping than doing anything else. Mm -hmm. Tori yeah. Madden says, would a private money lender lend on a home for someone that wants it as their primary residence? The house I'm in right now, the house I just bought in Montana, the house I lived in before, I used a private money lender on all of those houses. So yes, the answer is absolutely. And, and the thing about sub two that's interesting is that people think that sub two is just a creative finance community or mentorship. And yes, we are the leading, the industry leaders in creative finance by far. Like nobody, I don't even think there's a second competitor, let alone anybody. Um, but then on top of that, we teach private money at a high level. Like we teach corporate structure. We teach multifamily. We teach commercial. We teach land. We teach everything you can imagine because everybody in our community is actively doing those deals. So whatever it is that you want to do, Jay, you need to go, what's my market? Who's the community member I'm going to buy those deals from in that market? And who's the private money partner that's going to partner with me on those deals? Those are the first three things I can do. And guess what you can do? You can skip all the wholesaling and skip all the fix and flipping and just start buying and holding. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd say it would be great. If, but here's the thing. Don't plan on making any money on your buy and holds, even if they're cash flowing for at least 36 months. Okay. Peace, they're cash flowing. What do you mean don't plan on making any money? Well, what happens if you have a massive vacancy? What happens if one of the houses burns down? Yes, your insurance is going to cover it, but now you've got a house that has a payment and that there's no tenant in there. Mm -hmm. Plan for the worst, hope for the best. Go buy four rentals in the next 12 months. Buy four rentals the next 12 months or six now because you're better. Buy 12 the third, the third year. Now you're at 20 something rentals. You'll never have to work ever again in your life. Your rents are coming in, cash flows coming in. You're 36 months to full, full on retirement, F you money type of stuff. But still, people aren't willing to put in 36 months of work and patience. That's not me. I'll do it. <laughs> For sure. There you go. There you go. So even me, like I have active income coming in. Um, Low Rotor says, Pace, I'm in Kalispell, Montana. Would be cool to team up. Um, we will do a lot of community meetups this summer in Kalispell when I'm up there for the summer. Uh, I'll be up there for three, maybe four months this year. Should be a lot of fun. What incentive does a, P a PMP have to partner with me who has little to no money to bring instead of doing in, going into the deal solo? Um, man, I wish you're, you had an actual name Facebook user so I could actually answer that. Private money partners. Um, Y'all, can I be really, really rude to you, to, to you who just asked this question? You need better friends. And I'll tell you why. Because all your friends are obviously broke pieces of shit. Why do I say that? And I, I'm saying this very strongly to get you to pay attention. You don't understand different socioeconomic backgrounds. People that have money do not have time. A private money partner has money because they allocated their time to make that money. And so the advantage to a private money partner is they go, you find the deal. I don't want to deal with it. And you manage the deal. I don't want to deal with it, but I will deploy my capital. You don't have friends with money. Therefore, you ask that question. If you had friends with money, you would realize what their goals and aspirations are is to not mess with anything, but to actually get a return on their money. Okay. So the reason why I say it so strongly is for you to go, yeah, you're right. Who's the richest person you communicate with on a daily basis, uh, daily basis, Facebook user? Probably somebody that makes about the same amount of money as you do. That is a major problem in your life. A major problem in your life is you are hanging out with people that you are associated with, work around. You're not hanging out with people outside of your, your socioeconomic current situation, if that makes sense. Okay. So um, that is the answer. Um, Tori Madsen, Madden says, that's what I need right now. I want to get my first home using creative finance and using a PML. I need to get into the sub two as, as ASAP to learn this or connect with somebody. Okay, cool. So Jessa Roberts, she's in the community. She's an awesome leader. She does a lot of Gator deals, a lot of, a lot of creative finance deals as well. She says, you're the operator, the person who's operating the asset. That's the value that you bring to the table. Hey, uh, Jay, 
who uh Phil Jackson, right? Phil Jackson was the the coach yeah, of the yeah. coach of the Bulls, right? Yeah. What value did he bring when Dennis Rodman, Tony Kuch coach, um Scotty Pippen, Dennis Rod or uh, Michael Jordan, what value did he bring to the team when when he wasn't scoring a single point ever? Why did the why did Michael Jordan need some fuddy duddy Phil Jackson to coach them? <laughs> Phil had a mindset. He had the, the perfect the way he he treated each person, he, the, the value he brought, built that team together, not just by skills, but I think he, I know for one thing, he had a lot of his players read different books that um, fit, fitted their uh, personality. And so his mindset that he brought to the team, I thought was a big value that started getting them championships. There you go. So Justin Bozak answers the question. Justin Bozak's an amazing agent, does a bunch of creative finance deals. Love him. He's up in New Jersey, guys. You should know him. He also has, uh, follow him on Instagram. He's awesome. Love Justin. So Justin's got the right answer. The answer is he had the game plan, which is what you just said, Jay, just different words. He had the game plan, mm -hmm. right? So if you have the game plan of, hey, we're buying these types of deals. I'm going to manage these types of things. We're going to get this type of tenant. When this kind of problem pops up, I'm going to handle it this way. That's the game plan. There's the value that you bring to a private money partner. You're Phil Jackson. You're running the game, baby. You're take you're taking them to the holy holy ground, right? You're getting the championships done. Yes, sir. Cool. Makes sense. Makes crystal crystal clear. Okay, I could keep giving you more and more advice, but the reality is, uh, Royal Ann. Yeah, I, we block these people. They come in. I bl I block them. Don't worry. I'm in the side chat. I'm constantly blocking people. Even though I'm, it doesn't look like it. I'm constantly bl blocking people the whole time. It's a, it's there's a person in here, I think that has a crush on um, Jay Pride and um, keeps making sexual comments in the side chat. He's not available. He's <laughs> no. dedicated to making money. Leave him alone. Okay. Um. So I could keep giving you advice, but the reality is you've got your next couple of steps. Yeah. I would say, here's what I would focus on in the next three months. Okay. I would focus on becoming a man that understands private money partnerships. I would become a man that knows how to find sub two community members that have deals in the area that I want. I would become a man that knows how to underwrite those deals. And if you can acquire those three skills in the next 90 days, you are now unstoppable. Got it. Excellent. Micro skills. What micro skills do you as an individual need to focus on? And this is one of the things in the community that we've been working on is all these little micro skills, right? So each one of these is a merit badge. Now, this is an old merit badge poster. We're making one for sub two and Gator and top tier TC where there's literally 300 micro skills. One of those micro skills would be a networking merit badge, right? How do I network with other community members? Another another micro skill or a merit badge, as we call them, would be how do I underwrite creative finance deals? Another one would be how do I work with private money partners? Another one would be how do I manage the property? Another one would, all of those little micro skills are way more important in my personal opinion than creative finance ever will be. And that's why we made the community that we did is that you will continue to learn those types of soft and hard skills as long as you're in the community. So I would go, I'm focusing on these soft skills, how to find community members that have deals in the area I want, how to find private money partners, how to structure those deals, and um, more importantly, how to underwrite creative finance deals. Got it. Appreciate it. There you go. Now, next time, next time I see you, I better get a Dennis Rodman teacher. I'll be pissed off. <laughs> For sure. I'll come down there in Montana and hand it to you. Do you think, do you think that Tony Kukoc is pissed off that nobody ever made a t-shirt with Tony Kukoc on it? For sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Bill Lambeer. I wonder if Bill Lambeer ever had a t-shirt. Oh, I've never seen one. I never seen one either. I should start making t-shirts of obscure <laughs> NBA players who have multiple NBA titles that nobody would know who they are. That would be funny. That that'd make money. You would know. I mean, you and I obviously come from that era. So you would know Tony Kukoc and Bill Lambeer. And 
I think Isaiah Thomas from the Pistons would probably be recognizable. Yeah. Um, maybe Reggie Miller would be recognizable to most, but like people that are not basketball fans still know what Den who Dennis Rodman is. Oh yeah, he's great. <laughs> Power of freaking branding, dude! How freaking cool is that? Bill Cartwright for sure. I think oh, true basketball pe people for sure. <laughs> Jay, anything else, brother, before we sign off for the night? No, I, I think uh, you mentioned it a lot when you were speaking to Blake, but that the whole skill set, relationships, and resource uh, piece to, to get, I always thought, you know, find a deal, find a deal, find a deal. No, become a different person. Yeah. I like Become that. a different person and magically. So, I, dude, here's the thing that's crazy. I can't stop deals from flooding to me. And that's been like that for six or seven years. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I became a completely different person with different skill sets, understanding of the of the industry and options that I didn't have access to before. Yeah. People are like, oh, get really good at negotiating and this and the other. It's like, dude, you before you talk to me today, you're sitting there going, I got to go find my own deals. Yeah. Now at the end of the thing, you're like, wait, hold on. I don't have to cold call? I don't have to do that? No. I think people that tell you you should cold call unless you're absolutely suited for it, are just trying to sell you something. Mm -hmm. You need to know yourself. You need to know what you want and have an individual conversation about that. Um, Justin Bozak says, Jay Pride, we can see the whole shirt. I got to design. A, can we see the whole shirt? I got to design a pace version. There we go. It looks like Dennis Rodman's taking a dump. I do know, I do know that photo, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does look like he's taking a dump, but. He's not. He's not. <laughs> um, guys, before we wrap up, give Jay some love. Jay, thank you so much. You got homework. Come back to me. Yeah. A um, couple yeah. of things. Guys, make sure, make sure you 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 go to squatupsummit.com. Let's all hang out at Squat Up Summit in about five, six weeks. We'll have a little over 2,000 community members at Squat Up Summit. So if you're somebody saying, I need to meet sub two students, I need to meet Gator students, I need to meet the top tier community squadupsummit.com is the place to meet them in person for three days. We've got Grant Cardone coming out. We've got Cody Sanchez coming out. We've got Donald Miller coming out and a handful of other magical people. Go to squadupsummit.com. Get your tickets. Come hang out with us. We cannot freaking wait. Uh, <laughs> this is funny. Galaxy Big Bird just says, wait, no cold calling? You must have tuned in about an hour late. <laughs> Go back and watch the replay because I promise you we gave a very good detail. Take notes, all of that, okay? Really appreciate you guys. Get creative every single Monday night. Come in, hang out with us, squat up in the side chat, and we will see you guys next Monday, 7 p.m. Arizona time, like we do every single week. And if you're listening to, to this on the podcast, come over to the, to the live once a week on Mondays. We'll see you guys later.